Hey guys, in this video, we'll be looking at the functioning of a simple chemical cell. So stay tuned. If you haven't watched my video on electrolytic cells, I suggest that you watch that first. The link is at the corner. But let's get into a simple chemical cell. This is a setup of a simple chemical cell. Let's look at the components. First, we have connecting wires. And the connecting wires are actually connecting two different electrodes. These electrodes are made up of different metals. If the electrodes are made up of the same type of metal, then the chemical cell will not work. This is one of the differences with an electrolytic cell. In an electrolytic cell, they can be made up and often they are made up of the same type of metal or any other conductor. Then we have both electrodes immersed in an electrolyte. In any electrochemical cell, we must first understand where the electrons are flowing. If we can understand the electron flow, then we can deduce everything else. So let's look at this. The chemical cell is made of two different types of metals as the electrodes. So let's say we have metal X and metal Y. Different metals have different tendencies to donate electrons. So this is known as the electropositivity. And the way to determine which metal is more electropositive than the other is by referring to the electrochemical series. I've done a video on electrochemical series. The link is at the corner. Let's say metal X is more electropositive than metal Y. That would mean that metal X has a better tendency to donate electrons compared to metal Y. So when it comes to who is going to donate electrons between X and Y, it will be metal X. Whereas if metal Y was more electropositive than metal X, then metal Y will be the one that is going to be donating electrons in the end. So let's look at this example here. This is the ECS electrochemical series. It is an arrangement of metals according to their electropositivity. The higher up it is, the more electropositive the metal is. Let's compare between zinc and copper. Let's say we have one electrode as zinc and one copper electrode. Zinc is here and it is at a higher position than copper. Since zinc is higher than copper in the ECS, zinc is more electropositive than copper. This means that zinc has a higher tendency to donate electrons and zinc will preferentially donate electrons to copper here and the flow of electron is always through the external circuit once again electrons do not flow from electrode to electrode in the electrolyte electrons only flow from electrode to electrode in the external circuit now we've established the electron flow so let's say electrons start to flow from here zinc towards copper initially both are electrically neutral the amount of electrons are exactly the same as the amount of protons both in the zinc electrode and the copper electrode and therefore they are electrically neutral. However, when electrons start to flow from zinc out to the copper, there is going to be a buildup of negative charge at the copper and this will prevent further electrons from coming to the copper because negative will repel the electron which is negatively charged. Negative and negative will repel and so the chemical cell will stop working. So we need to find a way to eliminate the buildup of negative charge here. This is where the electrolyte comes in. For a voltaic cell or galvanic cell, this is where the salt bridge will come in. So here we have the electrolyte and the electrolyte is going to accept the electron from this electrode so that electrons can continue to flow. We will look at this in more detail later. Current flow is in the opposite direction of electron flow. Earlier we've established electron is going to flow from zinc to copper, therefore current flows from copper to zinc and by convention current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal and so now we can assign our terminal signs so copper will be the positive terminal zinc will act as the negative terminal the definition of anode and cathode is not dependent on the sign of the terminal anode is not associated with negative or positive by default Anode is where electrons are donated to the external circuit. Here the external circuit simply refers to here the connecting wire here. This is the external circuit. So where the electrons are donated to the external circuit is where the anode is. So we already know that zinc is going to be donating the electrons to the external circuit. That will make zinc the anode. 
simple way to remember this when we flip anode around we get donor here donor for donate so anode donate it so happens that the anode here is also the negative terminal now this is opposite to the electrolytic cell in an electrolytic cell the anode is the positive terminal so this is one major difference between electrolytic cell and chemical cell then cathode by definition is where electrons are accepted from the external circuit copper is where electrons are accepted from the external circuit so the copper electrode here will act as the cathode and it so happens that here the cathode is the positive terminal this again is in contrast to the electrolytic cell in the electrolytic cell the cathode is the negative terminal so anode and cathode's definition depends on whether electrons are donated or accepted it has nothing to do with being positive or the negative terminal let's study the reactions at the electrodes so for electrolytic cell we have provided a dry cell to the circuit that is the difference between an electrolytic cell and a chemical cell in the chemical cell we don't have a dry cell in the electrolytic cell we have an external power source that drives the movement of electrons so the reason for flow of electrons is due to the potential difference supplied by the dry cell itself but in a chemical cell there is no dry cell in fact a dry cell is a chemical cell we'll go to that in another video but here there is no external driving force so what causes the electrons to flow it is the difference in the electropositivity of the metals that's why if we use the same type of metals at the as the electrodes there will not be any flow of electrons because they would have the same electropositivity but because one metal is more electropositive than the other the more electropositive metal will donate electrons to the less electropositive metal so the driving factor here for the electron flow is the electropositivity of the metals and the source of the electrons here is from the more electropositive metal so opposite to what happens in an electrolytic cell there is no discharge of anion here the source of electron does not come from the anions in the electrolyte the electron will come from the metal itself and therefore the metal will donate electron and become ions it will be ionized the metal electrode here will be dissociated so this will cause the observation will be over time this metal electrode becomes thinner and thinner because more and more of the metal will be dissociated into ions the general formula for this will be y y represents the metal this metal electrode here becomes y m plus m plus depending on how many valence electrons the metal has and plus m e depends on how many valence electrons has been given away by this metal so the metal becomes ion at the anode there is no discharge of anions then when the electrons reach the cathode at the cathode cations are still discharged same as the electrolytic cell so here the positive ions the cations will accept the electrons from the cathode here and they will be discharged the general equation will be xn plus representing the cations in the electrolyte plus n n number of electrons depending on the charge here if it is n plus it will accept n electrons to become discharged in terms of redox reactions the reaction at the anode and the cathode will always be the same because of their definition the definition of an anode is where electrons are donated so every time electrons are donated the substance is being oxidized oxidation takes place oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain of electrons so again at the anode here oxidation will take place oxidation of the metal electrode at the cathode because cathode is where electrons are accepted from the external circuit then reduction will take place because electrons are gained oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain of electrons so here the cations in the solution will be reduced by gaining electrons the energy conversion in a chemical cell is the opposite of an electrolytic cell we begin with the chemical energy that is stored in the metal electrode then it is converted to electrical energy as electrons flow in the external circuit the general principle is the same we have to first start with the electron flow once we start with the electron flow we can define everything else 
in the cells whether it is an electrolytic cell or a simple chemical cell like what we've discussed in this video if you've learned something please support me by hitting the like button if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe i will be posting at least one video a week i'll see you in the next video